All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna to try to show you proof of the power rule, okay? And before I can do that, I just wanna remind you uh, first of one pre-calculus item. This is Pascal's triangle. And I'm gonna use that to use a binomial expansion for, well, let's make this up, x plus two to the third power. All right, now I could multiply this out three times. Okay, which I don't really wanna do because that's kind of a hassle. So remember there's this alternative way of doing this. And what I'll do is I'll look at the power here and write, that's an n, n plus one pairs of parentheses. So there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. Okay, and the first term I have here is an x. I'm gonna put that in all my first terms between the two pairs. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with a two. I'll put that in the back part. Okay, two more steps. I'm gonna take this power of three, and I understand that when I multiply this out two times, I will get a, an answer that has a power of three to it. So I need a, um, I do need an X that has a power of three. And I'll need, the next term will be an X with a power of two, and then one, and, and then zero in descending order. And then I'm gonna reverse it the other way. I'm gonna go three this way, two, one, zero. And then with Pascal's triangle, what you're gonna do is look at the, the power of, in this case, three, and along the second diagonal, just kind of shoot down there. And when you finally hit the three, look at that respective row. Okay, and you can see I have the numbers one, three, three, one, and those are the numbers that would fit out in front. Okay. All right, now, the way you would finish this is, well, two to zero is um, one, and x to the third is x to the third. This becomes x squared. Two times three is six. This is two squared, which is four, times three is 12. And this last thing, anything is zero power is one, and two to the third is eight. Now, why am I doing this? This part isn't as important, but this piece is. And I'll show you why that's important in a second. Okay, so here's the idea. You have x to the n, that's this function. And we're telling you that the derivative of this x to the n is n times x to the n minus one. And you're like, well, where the, where'd that come from? All right, so let's think about derivatives, okay? How would I find that the derivative of this is that that guy. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say the limit formula. The limit as, in this case, we say delta x goes to zero. Remember is f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. Okay, and if I were to replace this x plus delta x in for this x that I have right here, then this is where my proof begins. Okay, first of all, delta x is on the bottom, okay? And it's x plus delta x in this f, so I gotta write x plus delta x to the n. Okay, minus f of x, okay, all over delta x. And you're like, okay, that seems to make sense. Now, how do you expand this when you have an n? Well, I gave you that example earlier just to kind of give you an idea of what happens to binomials when you expand them. Okay, I'm gonna put this in the back because I'm not gonna need that for a little bit, for a minute. And let's take a look. Um, 
first thing that we have to know is that this first term, which is an x, is the same as the x that you saw up here, all right? And if my power was a 3, then my first term also had a 3 with it, all right? So my power, though, is an n, so I'm going to say x to the n, okay? The second term in the binomial was taken to a 0 power, so I could say, you know, times delta x to a 0 power. Okay, and then know that my coefficient outside, well, those will always start with a one. Okay, and then you can repeat it. Okay, and well, geez, let's think for a second. My second term had a coefficient of three. Notice that that matches the power, and that will always hold true. If you had a power of four, then the second number in your binomial expansion will be a 4. Since my item is an n, okay, power of n, then what that means is I'm going to put an n out front times x to the, now the second power of x is 1 less than the first, so I'm just going to call this n minus 1, okay, times delta x to the first power. Okay, and you would keep doing this over and over and over again until you got the very last term. And the very last term is, well, you'll have an x to the 0, okay, because you're traveling from n to n minus 1, n minus 2, all the way down to get to 0, times your delta x, okay, to the n power. All right. Now, that is kind of an ugly expansion. However, things will simplify in about two steps. Okay, so first thing, that's not an equal to sign. It's an operation. So let's do this in blue. This is the limit as delta x goes to zero. And remember what I said in previous practices with derivatives in terms of using the limit approach. If you did your math right, the item in the back here should cancel with something in the front, all right? And so you can see that it actually cancels with this monster in the very beginning because anything to the zero power is one times the one out front leaves you with just x to the end, okay? So these guys will go away and you're left with n times x to the n minus 1 times delta x minus, okay, it would be the next term, which is, well, I don't know what this coefficient will be, and that's okay, and I'll show you why in a second, to the x minus 2, x to the n minus 2, excuse me, okay, times delta x to the second power, in parentheses, okay, all the way to the very ends. Okay, and again, this guy went away, so my last term was x to the 0 times delta x to the n. All right, now, our next step. Remember, I always told you that this back term should cancel out. That's your f of x term. Remember, your delta x should also cancel out, assuming that you did your math right, and I believe we have. Okay, so um, let's do this. Let's factor out a delta x. And this is actually going to be our last step. Okay, so I'm going to pull out a delta x from everything. And you're like, does every term in your numerator have a delta x? Well, it starts with this first one. There is one delta x. And so I'll pull out just one of them. Okay. And then um, the next term, I think I put a minus sign here. doesn't matter if it's minus or plus. I don't know what this still is. I do know that I have an x to the n minus 2. And you're like, why am I still allowed to put a question mark there? I'll tell you. Just a second. Times delta x now. Well, I had 2 here. Now I have 1. But what do you notice about your delta x's? Okay. Your delta x's will increase by 1 every single time until you get to your last term, 
where there is now an n minus one. Okay, it used to be n, but I have to take one of them away. And so I have, well, I have an x of zero there. I'll leave it there just because it kind of gives a placeholder that shows that um, that is our last term. That will give me a one. But now this is a delta x. Okay, to the n minus one. Okay, and now these will go away. All right, and what am I left with? I'm left with n times x to the n minus one plus, again, I didn't know what this term was, and that's okay, um, x to the n minus two times delta x, okay, plus the very last term, and again, there's a bunch of terms in between here, and let's see, x to the zero is one, but I still have this delta x to the n minus one. I don't need that parenthesis. And I'm now gonna take the limit, okay? And if you think about this limit, I'll do this in green. It says delta x has to go to zero. Well, I have a delta x pretty much everywhere except for the front, okay? So there's a delta x here. This will go to zero. And when you multiply that through, that gives you a zero. And the next item would be a delta x squared, because remember your delta x's keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger until you get to this last term, and there's still a delta x. And so you're gonna always get a zero in these last spots. Okay, and the only thing that you have left is n times x to the n minus one. Okay, and remember this over here is your derivative formula, that is f prime of x.